God, I thought I just deleted all my uh, podcast topics. <laughs> Welcome back to another podcast. This is actually not a legacy po- podcast, and I am joined today by Brett Brett Westover. Uh, so, me and Brett were talking the other day, and we actually had a little debate on HEB chips. Oh, and you my said, God. save it for the podcast. And I was like, okay, this would be oh, a perfect this time one's gonna bite me. to start the new podcast or start the year off yeah. right. Because it is today is the start of a new year. I already January know I'm, I'm not going to win this debate. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. So I bought um, sour cream and onion chips, baked chips at HEB the other day. And I love all the baked chips, especially like the sour cream and we, onion ones we, that Lay's makes. You huh. bought the same ones I already bought? Yeah, they're over there in my cabinet. I'm not touching them again. Oh, I thought... <laughs> I thought like you haven't even tried them, but you just knew you didn't like them. No, no, no. I you already I, had them. Yeah, I, I didn't bought, know that. I, didn't I know bought that. them the night before. Mm, and what? Yeah, the I night, bought them. I just so happened to buy them the next day. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like a Doctor B at H E B. Those are fire. Yeah, those are fire. H E B has a a knack for ripping off every single <laughs> brand. So every grocery store does. Yeah, yeah, but they H-E-B, just do it well. H E B does it well, while also. It feels like you're only shopping H-E-B products when you buy H-E-B. It's like, yeah, I can't find fucking Oreos. Oh, H-E-B's got a brand of Oreos too. Twisters. Twisters, yeah, exactly. So good. good. I actually haven't had those. but I should have brought them. I have them. Oh. (laughs) So we're we're not going to get into why Brett's taste buds are wrong on baked chips. We're just going to go through the best baked chips. What... Mm is your top baked chip. It better not be sour cream and onion. No, no, no. Okay. I don't eat a lot of baked chips. I'm not going to lie. I just go for the the classics. Yeah. Uh, I would probably go with the Lay's barbecue baked. Okay. That's a solid one. I'm a big barbecue chip guy. Yeah. I would I think I would probably go baked Cheetos first. Oh. Oh, yeah. So not a chip. I mean, a snack, a baked snack. Yeah. Yeah. But Cheetos. It, uh, yeah. Cheetos. Okay. Mm, yep. So I, I thought they were baked chips. They yeah. have the same packaging, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then second, I would also, I would, it might also be first. It's baked scoops. They're really hard to find. The tortillas or tostitos, they make baked versions of that. I don't think I've seen that. Oh, and th- they taste really? exactly the same. Like the, they're a little like, less salted. They're like corn tortilla scoop. Mm-hmm. Really? I don't think I've seen baked. Yeah. And then probably I would have to go baked ruffles. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Which what's your two and three? I would say baked ruffles are up there. I'm yeah. a big fan of the wavy chip. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm typically a fan of... However, if you eat too many of those, your uh, mouth oh, or yeah. your tongue is raw. Disintegrated. Disintegrated. Yeah. You get those little like spots on your tongue where yeah. it just hurts. Also the top. The top. Mm-hmm. The roof of your mouth. Ugh. I get that with uh, Captain Crunch. If I eat too many yeah. bowls of that. Oh, yeah. Feels like I just ate a piece of barbed wire. But Cheetos don't do it. Yeah, Cheetos don't do it. I love Cheetos it. for that fact. Cheetos go down easy. Mm-hmm. I would probably go. I'm going to go Ruffles. In third, okay. Cheetos in second, and I think I'm gonna stick with the barbecue Lay's baked in first. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. And then, so after that, I think it would have to be baked sour cream and onion by Lay's, not H E B, not H E B. I love sour cream and onion. I chips, can't tell though. you the last time I had a baked Lay's sour cream and onion. Yeah, they're really hard to find. They're like only in big. Box retailer, like Sam's Club, you have to buy them in the big uh, box. And then I would probably have to go baked uh, barbecue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As long sure. as you're not going original. No, no, no. The no, unflavored? No, no, no. Okay. That's, sometimes that's the only thing I can get on GoPuff, or it's the only thing in store. Then, then I'll have to eat it. But that or I'll have to dog some pretzels. Pretzels aren't like an everyday snack for no, me, No, but though. they're a classic. They're I'm, not, classic. I'm never mad at it. Yeah. It just doesn't scratch that itch yeah and i mean they don't have like a lot of flavor i guess and what do you do with the pretzel 
Like you can't dip it. No. There's no dip for pretzels. No. Uh, the chocolate covered pretzels. Okay. They're still not that good. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather just have the chocolate. They pretzels. are one of the healthier snacks though. Yeah. That's out why. of out of everything. That's yeah. Why. That's probably why they're not the best. Well, speaking of 2023, do you have any? Did you write down any goals that you have for this year? I was actually planning on writing them down right now. Oh, really? Yeah, until you told me to come over. <laughs> uh, I have an idea. Okay. But I don't want to put them on paper until I'm solidified that those are the things that I want to accomplish. Yeah. My biggest mistake in the past is just writing down like 15 goals. Yeah. And then at the end of the year, I only did five of them. And mm-hmm. I'm like, why did I even waste my energy yeah. on the other ones when I knew that they probably weren't going to happen? Um but I think I'm going to break it down. I'm going to do three main goals this year. I'm going to go a professional goal, a fitness goal, and then a content goal. Ooh, I'm going to stick like to that. three. I'm just going to stick to three. Yeah. And then uh, if any side quests happen. Side, a little side mission. I think one thing that I've done every single year since I started doing like content and stuff, I've always had a number that I've tried to hit. I've mm-hmm. tried to hit this many followers. I've tried to hit this many views. I've tried to get uh, this many never this many comments, but like this many likes. And I think this year is the first year I'm not going to put a number on anything. Mm. I'm, I mean, I, I don't think I've hit a lot of the numbers that I've made and that's why I don't think I'm going to put a number on anything. I think I'm going to, the one thing that I want to do is like make the content that I want to make. Same. Yeah. And instead of just trying to get the views, trying to get the numbers, because like this is my third, fourth, fourth, third, third year of doing this. Mm -hmm. No, this like at the end of this year will be my fourth. But uh, I feel like this is the year where if I'm going to keep making content, it's got to be something that I want to do all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm getting to the the burnout stage. Uh, What what do they consider like the typical lifespan of a content creator? 18 months, 18 months of yeah. the same style of content. Mm-hmm. I think now I'm coming, I'm about a year and a half in like the supplement content. Yeah. I think I'm getting to the end that if I don't start doing exactly what I want to do, I'm going to burn out. Yeah. One, one, one thing that I've been, wa- or I've been watching like a lot of commentary YouTubers. Mm-hmm. So like Danny Gonzalez, uh, Jay Schlatt, Ted Nivison, they just like react or do commentary on like videos and stuff i want to try that out i want to experiment with like a lot of new stuff me too yeah and i just before you came here i was actually i just got done filming uh my running shoot cycle oh, or like really? what I, yeah what i use to or like go through on the daily mm-hmm. running what what's your uh what's your there's a fucking word for it <laughs> I and I could not say it in the YouTube video. It's like, it's not cycle. It's your running shoe. Like what shoes you rotation? use? Rotation. God <laughs> damn it! That took so long. <laughs> rotation. That's the word that I need. That whole YouTube video does not have the word rotation in it. <laughs> the the keyword, <laughs> bro. The keyword. The it's SEO gonna, is not going to be there now. No, it's gonna it's gonna be in the title and thumbnail. But however, it will not be in that entire video. So we want to break down the shoe rotation. Yeah. What What's your go-to? Uh, so I broke it into three categories. I have my easy runs up mm-hmm. to like five miles. Yeah. And then I have my five to like, any, like 15 miles. And then I have everything, like anything past that. That means race and uh, okay. actual like long, long runs. Okay. I would probably so I'm gonna break it down into an everyday shoe, yeah, a long distance max comfort shoe, and mm. then what I use for racing. Okay, so let's start with the daily shoes. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Nike Invincible. Yeah, uh, I love like the thicker shoe. Yeah, um, I also use that for a little bit longer distance as well, but that's like my go to everyday shoe. And I also see you use that one a lot for recovery as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll wear them just like at the office, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, super easy on my feet. Um, and then, so that's probably my the most used daily shoe. Okay. Sometimes I'll throw in like fast shoes in there as well, but that's my go-to daily shoe. Yeah. Max cushion. I know you hate them. I, I mentioned that I hated the, them the in that balance, video. The Fresh Foam More yeah. V4s. It's actually crazy how wildly different people's feet yeah, can I be. Know. Yeah, I know. Because we both have wide feet. 
Yeah. I I don't know if you have a big arch, but I have a very high arch. Oh, very flat. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. and I think that's probably why I need so much stability in my shoe. Yeah, my arches are gone. <laughs> it's gone. And I I said it in the video. I said if you're if you get your feet tested and they recommend the shoe, it's probably a really good shoe for you to run in. Yeah. However, it's just not for me. Yeah. Um, along with that, kind of that falls in between the everyday shoe. It's a weird. I would say it's in between everyday and max comfort, and then it's also in between max comfort and race. Okay. The New Balance Super Comp. Yep. Trainers. That was my that was my race shoe. Yeah, like I can use that thing for anything. Anything. And like it just adapts to whatever style. Like if I want to go nice and slow, it's nice and easy, mm-hmm. super squishy. If I want to go fast, super springy. Yeah, super springy, super reactive. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to race in that thing, yeah, it might be a little illegal, but we're we're not that yeah. we're not that competitively yeah, yet. No, no, yeah. Bush League. <laughs> yeah, we're. Uh, not in that league. What do you, so uh, speaking about all these like different brands that we're running in, what do you think overall the best brands of 2022 were? Oh, just wait. what did what did you for everything? Yeah, mm-hmm. like or let's just go like clothing and like stuff that you use every single day, just in general. It's a very loaded, wow. wide variety question. I'll start. One thing that one brand that I started using a lot is because you bought their chapstick. Dude, I, fucking that, was, that Duke, was the first thing I started thinking. <laughs> fucking Duke Cannon. That was the first thing I started thinking. It's such a good brand. So we, we've actually talked about starting uh, like a men's, how would you say that? Men's like care line? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. However, I fa- we, or we, you found Duke Cannon and introduced me to hit, like that brand. Yeah. Bro, I use their cologne. It's actually on the back table over there. I use their body wash now. Um, I went and like bought the super thick one. The super thick yeah. one. Well, it came in that thing, uh, the fucking loofah thing. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. you just put the brick in there, and yeah. then you, it actually scrubs mm, with yeah, a brick. Yeah. yeah. And so I bought that. I'm on my second like brick of soap. Damn. Um, I bought two things of the solid cologne. The solid cologne is awesome. Yeah. And it stays on all day. But that that's pr- a one really good brand. Like the that, most used stuff, I would probably go with Duke Cannon. Yeah. Like personal items. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Um, that's a great way to break this up. Like what, uh, like personal items, uh, clothing items, mm-hmm. business and uh, at sport, I guess. Business and sport. So let okay. the next one, let's go business clothing items. Business clothing item, like at work. Yeah. What? Oh, I'm passionate you, about this one. Lululemon. Yeah. I'm a big Lululemon pants guy. Okay. I'm, I'm, I understand they're extremely expensive, mm-hmm. but the amount of times that I would go to the store and I would buy a fifty dollar pair of pants four mm-hmm. times until I found the one that I actually loved. I spent two hundred dollars. Yeah. I'd go to Lululemon, spend one hundred twenty, and this pair is gonna last me years. Yeah. Hmm. I actually got another pair today. Yeah, I, I saw that on your story. So I just have, I the, think same, that's what you were I have the same say. pair of pants in four different colors. Now. <laughs> hey, I mean, you can't be mad at no, that. No. One brand that I used a ton this year. I mean, I have a lot of, like, finding pants in my height and, like, waist yeah, size is, tough. like, a little hard because I'm a 30, 34, yeah, 30 oh, waist, yeah. 34 length. Um, but one brand that I used a lot this year, and it's cheap, is Target. Good yeah, fellow. Really? Yeah. The Target just generic pants brand is really, really solid. Oh, I actually have the body wash I'm using right now is Goodfellow. Oh, really? Target. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. Target. I mean, these brands like these box or what was it? Grocery store brands. Yeah. I have some pretty nice stuff sometimes. I mean, Target, H-E-B. Yeah. But so Target has their like Target brand, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then they have like Goodfellow which is a step above that, but it's oh. owned by Target. Oh, so I it's not you. the one that specifically has like the Target logo on it. And like, mm-hmm. you know, this is Target brand. Yeah. Most people probably have no idea. Actually, now that I think about it, I buy a lot of shit from Target. All this furniture that we're sitting on, this couch, these chairs, and all those uh, bar stools right there, all Target. Yeah, you can't beat it. They're probably drop shipped, <laughs> however, from Target because they're Target online. They're definitely not in store. And shit, dude, there's a lot. So Target, I did use a lot this year, which is kind of wild. Other than that, business-wise, has to be Nike for me. Yeah. So 
I didn't get any pants from Nike. Going, However, you're going shoes? No, no well, yes. But I do all of my collared shirts that I really like. Nike? Or Nike. I didn't know that. Yeah. So oh. the Rise Fuel uh, collared shirt mm. is Nike. I have a couple just like basic Nike shirts. I do use them for golf sometimes. And then I, I brought an egregious amount of shoes this year. <laughs> And they are all Jordan 1 lows, Jordan 1 highs, or Nike dunks. But they're all shoes that you can wear in and out of the office. In, out of the office, and, like, you can wear them in business meetings, which I really like, and people are, damn, that's well, kind of, like, bold. In, in our industry, though. Yeah. There, you see a lot Huge. more of it. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, when uh, we were in Houston, uh, we I met the bu- one of the bucked up guys. Mm. and big shoe guys yeah, yeah huge shoe guys i always see that and one of the bucked up guys just had we started talking about shoes for a long long time just walking Crazy. through the store while they the ceos did their thing we were just like and sitting I, in the I back i feel like especially in our industry it's so much more common to see like the streetwear yeah from professionals than it is the like suit and tie yeah yeah i mean i think that's kind of like gym attire yeah. too because mm. i wear a lot of uh well, let's let's get into uh, the b- fitness brand of the year. What do you think that is that you have used the most? Personally, I would go Young LA. Yeah, I mean, I mean personally, I'd go GBT as well. I'm yeah. I wear that shit all the time. I almost put a lot of these brands in the same category, mm-hmm. the ones that are dropping every month, every other month. Yeah, um, they all kind of have that similar style, a little different spin on maybe like the name, yeah, and what like the message behind the brand is. But mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, most of them are pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, and that's why the transition for me from Anaka to GBT yeah. was so easy because like it's pretty much the same stuff it's a very loud short you got the dope shorts gbt however has a way better message behind it yeah i mean it's get better today and i fucking love duhan the filmer or yeah. the videographer and russ the owner um that was a really easy transition for me so outside of i guess the brands that were sponsored by what do you think the brand of the year was i'm gonna go new balance or Under Armour. I, w- I would go New Balance. Yeah. New Balance is just surging. In yeah. Every category, too. Everything. And now they're doing, like, the high-end fashion collabs. Have really? Seen that? Like, Stone Island. I have not. Um, oh, there's a couple. Yeah. But, I, I mean. Well, who's who's the designer that makes, like, the 550? <sighs> it starts with an A. Like, AIM. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, gosh. Well, I, I like New Balance. Hi, hype beast stuff, you know? Yeah. Personally, I like New Balance because of, I mean, one, the Super Comp Trainers. Yeah. It's a fucking awesome shoe. Yep. And every, sh- so I think that's the only shoe, but I also have, like, jackets from them. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're great quality fitness apparel. And the second brand that I said, Under Armour. If you are looking for cheap winter running gear, holy shit, Under Armour is the way to go. I got four pairs of tights, each twenty three dollars. Warm, warm as fuck. I can't even wear them if it's like not cold enough. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, and then the, all the tops, the long sleeve cold gear stuff, super cheap. I think it was fifteen dollars on Black Friday for each that I got. Yeah. Great, great brand, right there. Yeah, you know the problem with Under Armour is that. I think they got so big mm-hmm. and distribution so far and wide across the world. Yeah. Everyone kind of stopped talking about them because like the buzz wasn't there anymore because mm-hmm. everybody could get it. Everybody had it. Yeah. But they still make great stuff. Yeah. Some and of I, my favorite joggers are from them too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like same thing with like New Balance. They're like, oh, I could just go to Kohl's and I could get New Balance. Mm-hmm. But it's like vastly different yeah. from what like we're using and, like, the really popular designer kind of stuff now. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes, like, the designer is almost, like, they get too much hype. Yeah. Because the quality of some of these other, mm-hmm. like, I mean, these big brands have amazing quality stuff. Yeah. But if you wear that to, like, a gym, you're like, oh, shit, you're not wearing blank, blank, blank brand. You yeah. Can, that I just, feel that like just you get dropped. Yeah. yeah. That you kind of get looked at different and kind of look down upon because yeah. you're wearing like, oh shit, he's wearing fucking Nike Elite socks. Yeah. The bitch is comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And then you and then you have like some of like the most 
badass athletes that are sponsored by Adidas. Yeah. And like nobody's looking at Adidas outside of the Yeezy line yeah. and saying, oh, that's cool. Bro, I mean, who is it? There's, I mean, I guess it's literally just in, I feel like it's more in bodybuilding and more in the industry that we're in because I'm, if you look at sports, major sports, mm-hmm. that no one's heard of any of the brands that we're talking about. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy oh, yeah. to me. Yeah. There's such a big market out there. Yeah. If Young LA or uh, GBG, if you're listening, go find like go find some good athletes or no, yeah. okay that sounded really fucked up <laughs> go <laughs> go find some like actual athletes that sounds really bad again too it's a loser. Go, uh, get like an nba player or an nfl mainstream player mainstream maybe yeah a mainstream athlete yeah because yeah. there's a huge market out there yeah and they're only buying nike under armor new balance adidas yeah and no one's really going to be a buying Adidas except soccer fans. After like, imagine if you Kanye. put a LeBron on GBT. <laughs> you know what I mean? Huge. Yeah. It's also, the, then again, you have the opposite argument. I mean, when Conor McGregor was with Rise, yeah. didn't do that well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the problem with, like, maybe, like, a brand like GBT is just not enough people know about it yet. Yeah. Like, great stuff, just not enough people know. Yeah. And maybe they want to keep it that way. Yeah. Maybe. That's a... Uh, pretty kind of crazy to think about though how much like how big the actual fitness active market is yeah insane so one thing that we both love and both consume probably too much of are energy drinks yeah, i just knew you're going there Okay, we did a video where we drafted our top five Rise energy drinks, but now it is time to draft our top five Rise and other brand energy drinks. Mm. So I'll let you have the first pick, and we can't pick each other's. Oh, okay. So energy drinks just in general? Mm -hmm. No specific order. Are we going like my favorite or what I think is the most popular? Uh... A combination of both. So you're the general manager trying to put the best starting five energy drinks out there. In, okay, if I own a gas station. Yeah, okay. but you also, they got to have that, the reason like some of these big organizations do so well, like Golden State Warriors, they might not have the best uh, players out there, mm-hmm. but their energy, because they're all, they like each other, okay. is so good. Okay, I'm starting it off. Okay. White Monster Ultra. <sighs> Fuck, that one's hard to beat. <laughs> that one's hard that, to that beat. That one has clout. Ah, uh, man, shit. I'm going to have to go. Ooh, one that's like massive. I'm going to have to go. <laughs> this is tough. All right, this is my starter. It is sugar-free Red Bull. I know it's a bold one. However... Yes. You're going for the like the versatility of it. I'm going to go for the name. Okay. Literally just the name. So we might not be the best out there, but everyone knows who he is. Okay. Yeah. After that, because of the taste and name, Rise Kool-Aid. Fuck you. Damn it. <laughs> All right. That that was going to be my first choice, but... I feel my, like I'm redeeming myself from the last time you, we did this. You really are. Can uh, can I change my first one to Red Bull, not just sugar free Red yeah, yeah, Bull? Yeah, you yeah. Just, just do Red Bull in general. Yeah, Red Bull in general okay. because that classic one classic Red Bull flavor, whether yeah. it's diet or not. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, you get that at bars too. Mm, what do you yeah. ask for? A Red Bull vodka? Yeah, it's at every football game, baseball game. Yeah, so just the name availability. Second one, I'm gonna have to go Sunny D Rise. Mm, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Because when, when I think of morning energy drinks, that's what I think of. Yeah, it's an amazing one. Okay, I'm gonna go orange as well. Okay, because I feel like I gotta combat that. Yep. We're going with the rain <sighs> orange dream sickle. Ooh, that's a good one. That one really got a lot of attention this year. Yeah. yeah. The so I'm gonna go one in its prime was just insanely good. Ooh, no, 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 no. I, I, I I'm changing my answer. I'm going to go with Fuji Apple Celsius. Yeah. What? Dude, that was my favorite Celsius. It's a sleeper. 
However, really? Celsius is so fucking big. Yeah. <laughs> Celsius is massive. You see them everywhere. Yeah, that's true. I was going to say bang, uh, like a bang. I couldn't think of any good flavors because I never really oh, liked bang. bang. See, like, that's why it wouldn't sync with my team. Yeah. That's so, right. like, I got a, I love Fuji Apple. I love Sunny D. And I always order Red Bull Vodkas. Yeah. Mm. So, my team, the synergy is there. So, I'm, I'm going with, like, the ones that just are loud. Mm-hmm. I'm going to continue that. We're going Alani New Witches Brew. Whoo. Okay. I'm going to one-up that one. And I'm going to go Alani New Rocket Pop. Oh, yeah, I couldn't think of a lot of <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking that, and I was also thinking of the new orange float one. Wait, wait, wait! But I already, I already said orange. You can change your answer. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change mine to cherry slush Alani new because ah, that one's yearly. That's actually one I wouldn't have picked. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't have picked that one. Interesting. It's too, too syrupy for me. All Congo brands <laughs> are too syrupy <laughs> for me. To be honest with you, Prime. Huh? Prime. Prime's way too, <laughs> way too syrupy for me. Like uh-huh. it was, it was really good at first, and then like, bro, I cannot fucking drink Prime all the time. Yeah, I would much rather drink um, was it those squirt Kool Aids <laughs> in water and just make it less. It's yeah. too sugary. I see that. And like body armor, uh, the light body armors taste ten times better than Prime. Yeah, I'm a big body armor guy. Yeah. Body armor light. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I go with an unreleased energy drink? Sure. You know where I'm going. I know. We're going. I'm probably going to have to bleep that out. (laughs) (laughs) The likelihood I'm going to have to bleep that out is pretty If I owned a store, I'm putting the pre-order in. And it's going on my top five. Well, (laughs) I'm going to go unreleased. That I also hope happens because I have no idea if it's going to. And I really hope it's not fucking grape bazooka because I want oh, grape I, Kool-Aid yeah. energy drinks. Yeah. Grape Kool-Aid energy drinks would be a game changer. My favorite energy drink besides 3D pina colada. Oh, I forgot about 3D. And th- they're just not big enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Congo. Yeah. And like uh, was grape 3D. Because yeah. all the other... Uh, I have some of those in the fridge right now. Some of those... Uh, actually, I think 3D might be the only Congo brand that I like. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see I'm, that. I'm not, a see huge, that. not as huge Alani. Prime was good. The guy uh, at HEB, when they had the booth right next to us, gave me a stick pack from Prime. Shit was nasty. Not it? The, no, mm-hmm. the Ghost uh, Hydration... 10x better yeah. than uh, Prime stick packs. And it actually has stuff in it. Yeah, it actually works for you. <laughs> hey, mine has yeah. one more milligram of fucking hyd- electrolytes or hydration. He doesn't even know which electrolyte it is. No, bro, you put 250 milligrams. BCAs. Of BCAs. <laughs> bro, I could drink someone's piss and get more BCAs out of that. <laughs> what? I feel oh, like that's yeah. a TikTok clip right there that I would get sued so hard over. Yeah, we're going to have to bleep that if it goes anywhere. Yeah, I really want to post that as a TikTok clip, though. <laughs> if you guys... Oh, I got I to gotta restart the camera. So if you guys didn't know, Prime is not an actual hydration drink. And if... Uh, it's a lifestyle drink. Yeah. I feel like... You know how uh, Bang got sued for super creatine? I have a feeling you Prime could get sued for being a hydration drink. Yeah. When there is no actual hydration in it. Or yeah. not enough. So Bang got sued because there wasn't like enough creatine, I yeah, think. Yeah, to call it super creatine. Mm-hmm. It wasn't anything out of the norm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Prime has enough hydration to get called hydration. Yeah. And, and once you become so big, you have to really be careful with what you're claiming. Yeah. Well, I mean, smaller brands don't really have to worry about it, but yeah. once you're up there, it's scary. Yeah. I mean, shit, Rise had to remove intense focus. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, it would be smart if Ghost does too. Yeah. Or would it, yeah, they have insane focus on their yeah. can. That would be really smart if they did too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a little little scary right there. But, hey, that's a prediction for 2023. Either <laughs> Prime gets sued. They've done enough, especially with the Logan Paul video about 
um, liquid IV. <laughs> yeah, that's bro. Yeah, and then bro. Abe's video about fucking Dude. Logan Balls. Oh my guys, God. all your hydration does not have fucking hydration in it. And the fact I that re- it was the same really- flavors, the same colors, and the same font. <laughs> Abe, that was a dumb fucking move to make What's that. What's his name? Patrick, Patty, whatever. Patty the Batty. <laughs> Bro. He looks like the off-brand Logan Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Who can actually fight, though. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'd actually watch that fight, though. We're saying this, but our hydration better have some real fucking <laughs> hydration in it. <laughs> <laughs> or all hydration drinks it are a scam. Uh, I checked. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. If not, we'll make a hydration lifestyle and no one will get sued. And then we'll make an actual hydration. We'll just call it a drink. Yeah. We'll just call it a uh, rice drink. Oh, man. So I have a... Oh, speaking of drinks and stuff, what is your non... Or your favorite non-carbonated drink? Lemonade. Ooh, lemonade. Okay. Any kind. Okay. I'm just a big lemonade guy. I got you. I think the first time we went to Cowboy Chicken, I took you there for lunch once. I'm pretty sure I got a lemonade. I'm pretty sure yeah. you got a lemonade too. Yeah, that was before you were allergic to chicken. Yeah, that was, those are the that. those were the good days, man. Yeah. And you know what? Holy oh. shit, fucking 2022 was a lot. <laughs> you know what I realized yesterday? Country Time doesn't make pre-made lemonade. Do they? Yeah, they do. Like a like a big bottle? Yeah. They really? Do. Yeah, I found some uh, at Walmart once. I actually have some zero calorie stick packs right there. We're gonna use tomorrow uh, for the so, flavoring. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be good. While nobody else is at work, do we have work tomorrow? No, we it's don't. A, it's optional. Did we get an email? No, but before we left on Friday, we asked, and Nick said, eh, "It's optional." Oh, I was planning on just going to work tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Well, and then Nick Nick texted me yesterday and he said, "Hey, uh, you ready for Monday?" Yeah, every, everybody's coming at ten o'clock on Monday, and I was like, "If we had work, he wouldn't have texted me this because yeah. he would just assume that it's a regular day and I'd be there." But he kept texting me to like, like make sure that I was coming. That is so funny. I love Nick to absolute death, but this man, <laughs> whenever he's like. So uh, we work like nights sometimes. I, I don't mind it or whatever. I just, because he knows I'm going to be there no matter what. I want the brand yeah. to grow. Yeah. I want to be a part of the brand's growth. However, he does get to feel bad. He does feel bad sometimes asking us to like work late. Yeah. We, I mean, we don't mind. Sometimes it gets a lot, but I mean, we're just there to grow the brand. Preface. So the way he asks us to come in sometimes, <laughs> it's, it's so like, hey. Comical. Man, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, or wait, 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 no. He goes, man, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, I guess I know it's a holiday. You guys don't have to come in, but I'll be here. Uh, so it's don't always worry. The, I'll be here. I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be here so you ain't got to worry. Yeah. And then we're like, Nick, we were coming fucking regardless or not, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that. We're going to be there. Yeah. I mean, we're all here for the brand. I just think it's funny. He's, he's going to be like, oh, you don't have to come in, but I'll be here. Always. <laughs> Every single time. Oh, man. I mean, speaking of how much that we do work, what is one thing that you do? What is your favorite thing to do to relax? Oh, this is good. This is good because I just started exploring with v- video games again. Oh, yeah. Okay. so So I was... I saw somebody post on their store that I follow. I think they were just like a general content creator. Yeah. Uh, like no niche. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about the idea of escapism mm-hmm. and giving yourself a certain amount of time every day to just escape from the world. Okay. And I think they were relating it to the new Avatar movie. Okay. That they said that this was the best version of escapism of the whole year for them. It was the only time all year that they sat down for three hours without their phone and didn't talk to anybody. Hmm. So I started thinking about it. I've not thought about movies that way in a long time. Yeah. So I I love the movie theater. I like movies at home, but I love going to the movies for that reason solely. Okay. And I think one of my goals this year, besides like the top three that I'm doing, is just like a personal general goal, is every day I'm going to take 30 minutes to just like play a video game or read a book. Okay. So I'm not looking at my phone. 
Yeah. And I know you're probably the same way that we work so much and we're on social media that anytime you have free time or it's quiet, you immediately go to your phone. Mm-hmm. And I hate it. Yeah. I'm so like addicted Dude, I'm, to it now. I'm so addicted to social media. Yeah. And it's it's like, oh, for a long time I was like, oh no, it's just for work. I'm getting new ideas. Bro, I'm fucking on TikTok. I try to tell so myself that. much. Yeah. I'm on TikTok so much and I'm not getting any new ideas because 90% of the ideas don't come from TikTok because yeah. there's so much shit content out there. Yeah. And, and yeah. similar for me now, 90% of my ideas don't come from the fitness space. Yeah. It comes from me watching content in other sectors. Mm-hmm. Like influencers, content creators that have nothing to do with fitness. Yeah. For like, like Ryan Trahan. Yeah, like, our, our favorite creator. Dude, I get so many ideas from him and apply them to fitness instead of watching fitness and saying, oh, how can I do that trend as well? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's half. I watched one of Hiller's videos to, uh, about how he edited Logan Paul's, rest in peace, Logan Paul, edited <laughs> one of his uh, more recent videos about Pokemon cards. And Such a good video. Literally, there was nothing that applied to fitness in that video. However, I made two videos about supplements and fitness yeah. for Nick that hit hundreds of thousands of views. Yeah. And it's literally just watching content outside of your niche and trying to apply that content to your niche. And it honestly makes for better content a lot of the time too. Yeah, 100%. And I think storytelling is a huge yeah. part, a huge overlooked part in our space that I don't know if there's anyone who truly besides massive YouTubers that truly knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like those massive YouTubers are more Mr. Beast than Mr. Beast type content than actual storytellers. It's not necessarily stories that they're getting the views from outlandish ideas. Yeah. And then of course you're going to watch it because who else is giving away an Island? Yeah. And it's like, I mean, like I was referring to like the video I was just watching Jesse James power building for 30 yeah. days. I mean, that's like a very Mr. Beast type video. Yeah. There was some story that I saw where he's like talking to the camera mm-hmm. and he's explaining like going through it all. But the idea is more Mr. Beast. There's this dude on Snapchat chat called, uh, that I always see. His, I watch all the shit for some reason. Uh, Brownie, Brownlee. I don't know. He's from the UK, sponsored by Gymshark. Mm. But every single one of his videos is exactly like a Mr. Beast type video. Yeah. Same editing style, same like concept. Like, hey, if you pick up this 100-pound dumbbell, I'm going to give you $1,000. But I don't think there's anyone like, um, who is it? Uh, fucking Ryan Trahan. Yeah. Where, where he's also... Where, where he's progressing and telling a story at the same time in a way that people want to watch it. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone in the fitness space and, doing that. And I also think like the way he does it is that you don't know he's telling a story until the story's over and you go, holy crap, he just told a story. Mm-hmm. It's insane. He's literally my favorite content creator. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, after the, if you guys haven't watched the Penny Across America series yet, insane. that was probably one of the best series on YouTube ever best thing to happen to youtube this year yeah and i think it inspired like so many people because it showed that you don't have to have a super fancy camera you don't have to have incredible editing you have to be able to tell a story and like just have a not have a personality be able to tell a story in a way that engages people to like keep watching and they're engaged because it's you and, and they want to they want to come back the next day because they want to know what's on the next page. Yeah, and you're you also have like some overarching theme. However, it, it's just a good video. Yeah, half of it he filmed on his fucking iPhone. It's wholesome too. Yeah, you don't get like the cringe. Like you can tell he's trying to keep your attention. Yeah, he's just being him. Yeah, and there's nothing. I mean, there was audience retention stuff built in there, yeah. obviously, but he's that. I don't think that was his goal. No. Is like have audience retention. It was a byproduct of what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Oh man. So I got a good, would you rather right here? Okay. Yeah. Would you rather meet your ancestors? Like great, 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 great ancestors or meet your great, 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 great grandchildren. 
like people who are way the fuck in the future. Mm, I'm probably gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the future. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because if I meet people in the past, there's nothing that I can do that's gonna change where I am now. Okay. But if I meet them in the future, there's things that I could do now. If I don't like what I'm seeing, there's things I could do now or implement now that could change the future. Okay. I like I like that answer. But there's nothing I could do about them in the past. They're long gone. Yeah. Unfortunately. See, it would be hard to I mean it's hard to choose. I, I'm leaning toward the ancestor side. Really? Why? Um, I don't know. Kind of playing devil's advocate, but uh, I'm leaning toward the ancestor side because I feel like the future is going to get so busy with technology and yeah, all that kind of stuff. True. I want to see like how people were without that because I feel like there was definitely more meaningful conversations. Yeah. There was a def- definitely a different way of talking. Mm-hmm. And probably the world wasn't moving as fast as it was. Yeah, you could probably take some of those ideas and apply them to now. Mm -hmm. I do see that. Yeah, because I just know it's going to keep going faster and faster and faster and faster. There's a good chance if I met my great, 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 great grandchildren, they're not even going to talk to me. Yeah. They'll just be. They'll have fucking. Yeah. Guaranteed they'll have Neuralink in there. (laughs) That would be weird, weird. Who knows? Oh, man. Okay, so speak. Oh, I should have transitioned this. This was would have been a great transition for work uh, when we were talking about work. Would you rather work more hours in a day for fewer days, or work more days with fewer hours? More <laughs> hours per day and less days. Yeah, I think yeah. I think I'm on the same boat too. Because a lot of times when I get in the zone, mm-hmm. I'm in the zone and I don't want to stop. And sometimes I have to stop because it's just. Yeah. The end of the day and mm-hmm. you know nobody's around or nobody else to bounce ideas off of yeah um yeah and then i think you would have better breaks in between okay yeah i think it would give you a better recharge mm-hmm. yeah but i mean you could also get like i mean if you're only working like four hours a day so you cut every day in half that's really not that much yeah you would have a lot of time because like imagine the average work day so you're adding, let's say you add and subtract four hours from every day. Mm-hmm. So maybe you're adding four hours to four days a week and you're adding seven days a week for only four hours. Okay. I feel, I feel like it would be pretty much equal in the, in that sense, because I feel like oh, four hours, is really not that long. Shit, I ran for fucking two hours and 30 minutes today. Yeah, that's true. And it didn't feel that long. If you're subtracting hours every day, too, like, let's say we're just working seven days a week. Yeah. But we're only working. I mean, I pretty much work seven days a week for four hours at Rise. Yeah, we're all, what, what would that be, like, five and a half-ish? What do you mean? Like, if we if we were working 40 hours a week, and we're going to divide that by seven, it's going to be, like, five point something. Yeah, something like that. That's short. Yeah, it's pretty short. Let's say we start at eight, get done at one. You have a oh, lot. Yeah, you got a lot of time. You got day. a lot of day left. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And I mean that one's that one's kind of a toss up. I would right. rotate them every other week. Do something different. I don't know. Ooh, I like I like the rotation idea. I also like the idea of speaking in all languages. But the would you rather is would you rather speak in all languages or be able to talk to animals? I think I'm on the speak in all languages. I, I think so too. Because practically for business, it's like, yeah, bro, you, you fucking won at that point. If you can yeah. understand all languages and speak them fluently. The world is yours at that point. Yeah. You can go anywhere you want I'm, I'm and just be to, okay. I'm trying to think of what would be the benefit of talking to animals. I don't, I don't like animals. They're going to let me know what they're thinking. They're probably not thinking too much. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Unless that's you're talking saying. to like maybe an orca whale or like a gorilla with 70 IQ. I would be scared if a gorilla started talking to me. Yeah, he'd be like, <laughs> and they're probably not thinking that intellectual thought. Yeah. They're probably thinking, banana, mate. Aggressive. Aggressive too. fight. <laughs> yeah. It's like a b- massive bodybuilder juiced up. <laughs> it's like you're <laughs> fucking talking the same thing. Eat food. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to different languages for sure. Yeah. I, w- I want to be able to talk to everybody and I think it would just make the world more accessible. Yeah. I mean, I feel like especially if you were vacationing 
and stuff in a foreign country. Oh yeah, it would be so much better. That's a, that's the hardest part. Yeah. What do you think your favorite like scenery to vacation is? I don't know. I always thought it was the beach. And for the last yeah. three or four years, I've went to the beach. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like it's starting to change. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting sick of that or like, yeah, I don't know. I still very much enjoy it. But I, I think I, I haven't been, but I really want to go to a secluded like mountain type area where yeah. it's very green, waterfalls, stuff like that. I haven't experienced mm -hmm. yet, but I feel like I might enjoy that more. Yeah. I think my ideal scenery is somewhere I can be active. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you could go hikes, you could do yeah. trail runs, stuff like that. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So, I mean, that could be like Colorado uh, or that could be like the Grand Canyon. I guess they're both like, uh, one's one's not a mountain, It's but, but it feels yeah. like climbing a mountain. Yeah. Uh, it would be either of those or like climbing a volcano. Oh, I don't, did you see the new Netflix like documentary about that volcano? Mm -mm. Okay, I don't, I'm not going anywhere near a volcano after watching that. Oh, really? Yeah. That's scary? Yeah, these people were visiting this volcano that was like inactive. Yeah. But it wasn't inactive. Fuck. And, in, and in the matter of like 30 minutes, it went from inactive to active. And oh, all shit. of the steam came out of the volcano. And the steam comes out at like 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, so it burns the shit out of you. Yeah. So like these people the steam came out and they were trying to run from it and you could visibly see the steam like following them. Yeah. There's like footage of it. Oh, that's fucking terrifying. And the thing about steam, it's not fire. So yeah. like they're fully clothed and while all of their skin burned underneath, it didn't even affect the clothing. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah. It was insane. Oh yeah. Now I'm not going near a volcano. Insane. And there was people jumping into the water cause it was like a little private Island. Yeah. They were jumping off like, the rocks into the water to escape the steam. That's fucking crazy. Insane. Yeah. I bet that would heat up the water too. Eventually. Yeah. I mean, since all the fucking lava's underneath the earth. Yeah. That's that's fucking terrifying. Yeah. I watched this uh, YouTube documentary yesterday, actually two nights ago before I ran or whatever. Um, but I watched. It was called the. Oh my god! I'm thinking of it. It's like the hardest rate where dream is called where dreams go to, go to die. die. Yeah, bro. That was yep. the most insane race. What's the, uh, that I've, what's the name of the race? I can't think of but it, but it's the one where they have to, it's five stages. Mm -hmm. It's five, like 20 mile loops. Yep. And they have to collect pages from a book to yes. verify that you went to each checkpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Where, uh, where, what's it called? Um, Canadian go the Barkley marathon. Yeah, the Barkley. Yep. The Barkley and marathons. Like, out of like a hundred people that do it, like two make it. Like yeah, to like two finish. Actually, uh, each one. There's one, most one person made it. Most years, nobody even finishes. Yeah, and every year that someone finishes, it gets harder. What do you think about the start of the race, dude? That's that would be the worst thing ever. Yeah. So it's like that you have. Say you show up Monday morning at midnight mm -hmm. and then all the way until Tuesday or yeah. Monday at midnight again. No, it's Tuesday at midnight. No, no, it's Tuesday. So it's a 12 hour start time. Yeah. It can start at midnight Monday or no, no, no. It would be 12 a.m. Tuesday to 12 p.m. Tuesday. Yeah. So okay. it can start anywhere in between there. You have no idea. And the, just they just blow around. a conch where it goes. <laughs> and then you have to like start no. running. Yeah. You have to go. You have an hour to prepare. That'd be so fucked up. Yeah. And so they give you like a racing bib uh, with a number and you have to go collect pages in the fucking wilderness. It's more like a scavenger hunt yeah, you with just, a ton of running. You just get a map. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the course isn't lined or anything. Yeah. It's not telling you where to go. Yeah. You just have to go. And each stage is like on minim, minimum of 11 hours. Minimum. Yeah. Some of those courses were taking them upwards of 15 hours to finish. And the climb is insane. That Most people get lost. Too. Yeah. They're just mm -hmm. lost out there and they're running way longer. Mm -hmm. And some, like they were talking about like how he was hallucinating. There was one guy who yeah. finished the last race, but he was hallucinating bad the year before like mm -hmm. you could see it 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 looked like he went through trauma yeah like that's how bad that race is and then if there's two people 
at the very end. So each stage, everyone runs together. Yeah. And at the end, if there's two people left, they make them go in opposite directions. Yeah, because you can help each other throughout yeah. the whole race. And, bro, go opposite directions, and yeah. one guy has to choose which direction. Bro, and it's the, in the woods. The woods. There's nothing around. No. Once you leave, no you don't, cell service you don't either. see anybody for 12 hours. Yeah. Dude, that would be, ter- one, that would be terrifying, because if it yeah. starts, like, uh, it was the, raining in the documentary too. Yeah, like it was raining. Rain. He started it at midnight one night. Yeah, and you have to just run till, I guess, like three days worth of running. Yeah, bro, I don't know how people actually can do that. I, I mean, did. I did look at a Amer- or a ultra hundred mile race training program. Oh yeah. What'd so what would that look like? So the hardest part of that whole program would probably be. I mean, obviously, it would be peak week. But it's a 50 mile peak week for the two. They do back to back runs. So mm-hmm. it's a 50 mile run and then a two and a half hour run the yeah. next day. Yeah. So the big run is always back to back followed by a timed run. Yeah. And they're pacing it at 10 minute miles. I think I could probably, like, for the past two days, I mean, three days, I've ran third. 32 33 miles i think if i put together the 13 miles and 15 miles that's like it was a 26 week program i think i'm around like week 16 or something Hmm, that's that's not bad yeah no it's really i think i have more endurance than i thought yeah then again i just started cartering again (laughs) (laughs) then again i just started all the steroids again there's that yeah Oh man. Well, that is all the questions that I have <laughs> for questions. for the podcast. And I'm glad it wasn't like solely fitness based. That was pretty yeah. fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. I like the more lifestyle. And I think one of my goals going into this year is gonna be make more lifestyle content instead of just fitness content. Yeah. We should we should do one of these once a week. Let's just, do it. Let's run it. Twenty twenty three. We'll have a podcast for, name for you next week. Yeah. Brett plug your Instagram. At Brett Westover. Simple, just my name. Uh, on everything, right? Everything. Yeah. Um, and I am Jake Oki, Jake underscore Oki on everything. Can you spell that for him? Oh, yeah. Jake, hopefully you can spell <laughs> that one because it's kind of a tough one. Uh, underscore O-E-L-K-E. The L is silent because I don't take that shit. Thank you for <laughs> listening to the podcast. I will see you in another one. Actually, we both will. Peace. Peace.